This video looks at how certain quantities are conserved when moving in the direction of a killing vector on some given manifold. It also derives some important results concerning killing vectors on manifolds. So we know that killing vectors, k equals this, obey the condition, this condition here, that the derivative with respect to the variable with which the vector tangent vector is parameterized goes to zero. So this object here, d d lambda, this is zero. All right, now the Schwarzschild metric is this object here. Okay, and there are four killing vectors for this metric, which we've seen in a previous video, but two of them are here. K is this basis vector, directional derivative pointing in the t direction, and this, just to show you, is an upper index object. We can lower its upper index using the metric, and the other, uh, the other killing vector for Schwarzschild, the second one, is this object here in the angular direction, the basis vector pointing in the angular direction of phi. Now let's consider a particle placed in this geometry where the momentum per unit mass for this particle is P equals M0, U equals U for M0 equals 1. So this is the momentum per unit of mass. And this means that we can write this condition here in this form here. We can use the momentum vector per unit of mass as the tangent vector U. On both sides here, if we expand it out, there's only one component in this four-dimensional vector on both sides. And so on the right-hand side, P subscript 0 is the energy, uh, the time component, the zero component is the energy of the particle, and the derivative of that is zero. All right, now, the zero, zero component, the metric, the metric tensor for the Schwarzschild geometry is this object, and the tangent vector in the time direction, u zero, u superscript zero is c times dt d lambda. So d d lambda of this object, here it is, the argument inside the derivative here, this object, and on the right hand side the argument inside the derivative is e on c. Now this means that this bit and this bit inside here, the two arguments of these derivatives are equal, and so we get the total energy per unit mass of the particle. So the total energy per unit mass. All right now. The other killing vector that we mentioned earlier, and the angular direction phi, here it is, upper index object, and we can lower its uh, upper index here to lower index from contravariant to covariant components. d d lambda of that is d d lambda of this object, um, is d d lambda of this whole object here is equal to zero, as the condition specifies. We got g phi phi gave us this object in here, and the tangent vector d phi d lambda, and the um, uh, L component, which was the 1, gives us this object. Now, anti differentiate that, we get r squared sine squared theta is d phi d lambda equals some constant called L. Setting theta equals pi on 2, so we're in the plane, the familiar xy plane, and we get the total angular momentum here, this object here total angular momentum, and here we are, um, is, is equal to a constant. So we have conservation of angular momentum, and that's what the killing vector has given us. All right, we're now going to derive some interesting results involving killing vectors and the Ricci tensor, Ricci scalar, and the Riemann tensor. And we'll begin with the definition of the Riemann tensor as this object here. Okay. Now, one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to use the killing equation to remove the minus sign here. And we can do that by swapping these two indices because the killing equation is anti-symmetric in its indices. So we can swap the C and the A here to give us A, C, and the minus sign changes to a plus. So here's our first object here. And then we're going to permute the indices twice as we go through. You can see here to give us these two expressions. Then we're going to add the first two equations and subtract the third. So what we get on the left hand side, first two equations, subtract the third, and on the right, first two equations, subtract the third. Okay. Now notice that this term here will cancel out with this term here, and this term here will cancel out with that term there, leaving us this term and this one is equal to this object here. So here we go, two of the objects, so that's why there's a two there, two of these is equal to this object here. 
Now, one of the symmetry properties of the Riemann tensor comes to our aid here, and these first two terms in this expression here on the right can be made to disappear because this object here, this plus this, is equal to the negative of this. If we move this on the right hand side there, then these first two terms equals the negative of this. So we can replace these two terms with this object here, which is the same as this one. As you can see by the indices, they're the same. So we have two lots of this object times the killing vector. Next thing we can do is we can lower the D on the index on the Riemann tensor and raise it on the killing vector simultaneously. They're the same object, these two here. There we go. And then the next thing we can do is appeal to the symmetry of the Riemann tensor and swap DC and AB. So grab AB as a pair and bring them over here and take DC as a pair and bring them over here. And that, they are symmetric in that particular operation, so there's no sign change here. Next line down, what we're going to do is on the Riemann tensor raise the A index on the right here and simultaneously raise it on the killing vector on both sides. So we've kept the same. Then <clears throat> next step here is we're going to divide through by 2 on both sides to get rid of it. And then finally what we want to do is we're going to swap the D and the C indices and that is an anti-symmetric operation and so the minus sign here disappears. And that's the only thing we've done on the right hand side there, swap D and C to become CD in the two lower indices and that's anti-symmetric so we've lost the minus sign. And this gives us a useful relationship for all killing vectors, and that's this object here. Next, we're going to contract the indices A and C on both sides. We use a Kronecker delta there, and C is equal to A. We'll, make, we'll contract it and make C disappear. So over here, contract A and C, the first index and the third index. And that gives us on the left this object and on the right this object. The A and the A, they sum out, and we're left finally with this object here. Very important object, and very useful. Now, another useful result, very important result, it begins with the Bianchi identity. We're going to have a look at how the Ricci tensor R, the derivative of it, behaves on a manifold where killing vectors are involved. That's ultimately what we're getting at. So, how does the derivative of the Ricci scalar R behave in the direction of a killing vector is what we're interested in. So next page over, here's our killing vector times the derivative of the Ricci scalar and killing vector on both sides from the Bianchi identity, that's how we start those two there. And then what we can do is rewrite this so that it's the derivative, the covariant derivative of this object here minus this object. So if we use the product rule on this object in here and then subtract this object, we'll end up back here again. <clears throat> All right, next line down, we go here. We're going to separate this. There's two of them there, so let's just pull them apart there. And what we can do is the Ricci tensor here are, is symmetric in its two indices, A, B. So R, A, B is the same as R, B, A. And there's no sign change here because they're symmetric, so we can change those without any sign change in front. Next line down, what we're going to do here on this last term is we're going to swap the indices on the killing vector. Now, now that operation is anti-symmetric, so the killing vector is anti-symmetric in its indices, and so swapping A and B to become B and A changes the minus sign to a plus. Next line down, this object here, we're going to replace the Ricci tensor AB and R and uh, in both forms, RAB, RBA, which are equal, and replace it with this result we found earlier. Remember the Ricci tensor times the killing vector was these two covariate derivatives times the killing vector. So the Ricci tensor part is these two parts here, the two covariant derivative parts. They will then be placed in here. So the Ricci tensor disappears to put these objects in. And then next line down, what we're going to do is we're going to swap the order of these covariant derivatives. And that makes this a minus sign. With the next line down, we're going to factorize out the minus sign. And we're left here. Now ultimately, this is just two covariant derivatives of the killing uh, equation. And we know the killing equation goes to zero. So that bit drops out 
and we're left with just this object here. So the killing vector in the so the derivative, covariant derivative of the Ricci scalar in the direction of the killing vector, this object here, is equal to this. Now, just reminding ourselves of that result we found earlier, this one here is this object. So we now have the killing vector times the Ricci derivative, the derivative of the Ricci scalar in the direction of the killing vector, K superscript B there, is this object here. We now replace the Ricci tensor, RAB, with this object in here. All right, so, and we've replaced it with del B, del A. It's that middle bit there. Remember, we've still got del superscript A here. Next line down is we're going to lower this index A and raise this index A here. So we haven't changed anything. It's still the same. We can do that. Drop that index as long as we raise that one. One up and one down if they're the same index because we're summing them out following the Einstein convention. Now, let's split this up because there's two of them here, the two. So I split them up here. And what we're going to do is we recognize that the killing equation is anti-symmetric in its indices. So when we write out this second term, swapping them, we get this minus sign in here. All right, next step. All right, here we go along here. Now, what we're going to do is get rid of that minus sign by uh, changing the order of these two covariant derivatives. So it gives us this times this, this object here. Now, what we're going to do is replace those with the Ricci tensor. Here we go. All right, now there we can. In, uh, indices A, B here, indices B, A here. We can swap those because the Ricci tensor is symmetric in those indices. Then we can factorize it out. And we're left with just the killing equation, which we know is zero. So the whole right-hand side goes to zero. Now that immediately tells us that this object here, the derivative of the Ricci scalar in the direction of the killing vector, is zero. So our final result is the derivative of the Ricci scale in the direction of the killing vector is zero. And that's true for all killing vectors. And this tells us that the derivative of the Ricci scale it does not change in the direction of a killing vector. And it's confirmation that the geometry of the given manifold does not change when moving in the direction of a killing vector. So a very, very important result.